Hello everyone and welcome to a first taste that I have been eagerly awaiting the opportunity to share with you on the channel and that is for Industries of Titan. Now, as the uh, little icon up here makes quite evident, this is a game in early access. And while it's in early access, which should be about for a year, it will be available through Epic Games. And after that, it will be available on multitudes of platforms. Specifically, though, it will be available on Steam at that point. In fact, I think you can already wishlist it on Steam as of the recording of this. Now... As you can see right from the beginning, it does make it quite uh, clear what is going to be coming up reasonably soon and what are, are the, the larger um, features that they hope to add throughout early access. But what is here is a reasonably uh, in, engaged city builder game. Now, unlike quite a lot of city builders, there is... In addition to managing your city, there's also a strategic layer on top. Not a lot of city builders have combat in them, though Anno is perhaps one of a, one of a, a few big exceptions to that. But this one goes even further. It drills down and gives you much more control over the buildings themselves and actually what's going on inside them. Now, unfortunately, transport, uh, roads and trucks and that kind of logistics, that's not in the game yet, but this is something I'm very, very excited to see. So uh, perhaps if you have haven't had your fill after this first taste then do let me know down in the comments or with a like on the video and uh, when the transportation or combat 2.0 updates come out we may jump back and check this out but with that said and done it's always easier to show rather than to uh, to describe so let's go ahead and jump into a new game now this gives you a bit of a glimpse over some of the uh, styles of the game you want you if you're more into the the more chilled out experiences with city builders and you can go zen if you just flat out want a brutal challenge and survival but we're going to be playing around standard just to kind of get a basis of comparison for everything else now currently there's only one faction there are more plans and this is this is more or less your your kind of standard um run-of-the-mill faction as the titan gold rush ramped up many startups and corporations from earth mars and the asteroid belt have scrambled to snap up ruin rich land and start their own urban businesses the landfallers faction is this swirling, leaderless group of striving hopefuls from across the system. They're people who dreamed big and have probably tasted failure. They also share a common hyper-capitalistic culture. Landfallers are motivated by the perilous position and the powerful rewards of success. Every once in a while, these ventures can be incredibly successful. A few are already on their way to becoming full-fledged factions on Titan. Will you be the one who leads them to system dominance? Well, uh, probably not, considering the early access status of the game at the moment. But uh, one can strive towards these lofty goals, nevertheless. Uh, we've got lower-risk land grant, high-risk, high-reward, or pioneering terraformer. You can also select custom location, that's actually pretty cool. But uh, I think we're just going to jump in with a high risk, high reward. It'll just uh, adjust the procedural generation of the map a little bit. So uh, with that, let's go ahead and confirm the destination. You get a chance to name your corporation and even go into hard mode. We won't be for the sake uh, of, of this uh, first taste, but let's go ahead and pop down. Uh, what should we call ourselves? The Plato Partners? No, we'll call ourselves um, Dapper Dell Industries. Nice and simple, there we go. And with that, let's get down to the surface and check out how things go. I really like the aesthetic on this. I'm, I'm quite partial to pixel art and the, the sort of pixel art retro aesthetic anyway. And this is effectively just a 3D version of that. So uh, I'm very much game for this so far. Codex. Trade never sleeps. Titan citizens barely do, either, thanks to the incessant roar of low atmosphere ship combat. I, that sounds like a negative to me. I, I'm going to be honest, that's, that sounds like a bad thing rather than something to be proud of, and yet you are presenting it as if it is something to be proud of. Ah, the people of Titan. We Titan is where it was made by God to train the faithful, etc, etc, etc. No, that was Arrakis. Shut up, Titan. By the way, those of you who are familiar with the game studio, yes, they made Necrodancer, one of my favourite roguelikes. Well, rhythm roguelikes. It, roguelike in name only, really, but... The council is glad to see you. We have significant investments riding on your success. I hope you'll live up to our expectations. Very much so. I don't know why, but whenever I hear, like, synthesised melodies like that, it kind of makes me think of all the films that came out of the 80s. Welcome, founder, to Industries of Titan Early Access. You 
may find plenty of what we like to call bugs, which the council <laughs> are eager to squash. Well done. If you stumble upon such a bug, we appreciate you reporting it on the forums or on our Discord. Thank you. The council looks forward to seeing what you can do. Marvellous. I, I, I do like the kind of fourth wall breaking there. That was actually quite amusing. Right, let's go through uh, a quick a tutorial here. There we go. Right mouse button to move it. There we are. See a bog standard. This is how you play the game thing. Oh, okay. I, so it's a 90 degree increments. All right. Yeah, no, I can get down with that. Uh, zoom in, zoom out. Yes, there we are. Pausing and resuming the game. Space to pause. We do have time controls, which is quite nice. So you can take things slowly or just flat out stop them if you're getting a little bit overwhelmed i i do quite like that when you can use uh, hotkeys or the mouse hello, to change Founder. those My hello is Shiaro Hess, and i, I like your name Shiaro. every founder on titan is assigned a monitor like me i make sure you treat titan with respect it is the council's property after all i see i also advise on resource extraction and ruin salvage if we work together We'll make this city very efficient. I'm loving the visual style so far. Founder, please take a close look at your starting territory. The outlying tiles adjacent to your headquarters belong to you. You are free to do as you please with this land. Any land outside your territory, however, belongs to the council. If you wish to use that land, you will have to pay the council with influence. I like that. I like the idea of uh, paying with influence. That's, that's kind of how nobility used to work. When you become so rich, money becomes meaningless. And it's all about influence. You know, traditional kings and queens, they, they, they didn't really need money so much. Not amongst themselves. The nobility was more more about influence. And, uh, you know, if, if you wanted something, it was, it was who you knew rather than what you could offer in exchange. Uh, right, so... We want to turn off the overlay very well. Let's uh, pop and turn it back on. There we go. Founder, I see you eyeing those ruins. Indeed. Intriguing, aren't they? they are. The ruins cover almost every inch of Titan. They're the wreckage of an earlier, more foolish age. Less civilized, would you the say? The settlers who built them left many resources and artifacts behind. Your Marvelous. territory already contains some ruined structures. You can survey them in your city view. Survey results will show you the contents of the ruins. Issuing a survey order will assign an employee to do it for you. Try surveying the ruins you control. Very well. There we go. Now, from what I understand, the different ruins, well, I mean, based on their level, are going to take longer and offer bigger rewards. Uh, okay. Wow. Survey results have shown that some nearby ruins contain We're keeping this one. resources. Resources are used to construct buildings and devices. Our city needs them to grow. Try salvaging one of the ruins to gather its resources now. The resources Very well. you find there will be placed in storage automatically if there is storage available. Right here, I shall get on with that. However, we're keeping this one because of that. That is amazing. I have played through the game for about an hour and maybe two hours um, f to check out uh, the recording environment. And because I have tried to record this episode once before, but uh, bugs, uh, early access game, they are to be expected. But uh, yeah, so that that footage had to, had to go away. Nevertheless, let's have a look around here. Now, this is a much better deal. We'll get a decent amount of minerals, isotopes, and a bit of waste, but uh, we would only get one red artifact instead, because it's basically uh, an either-or. You pick one, you don't get the other. Uh, so we'll go ahead and we'll salvage those resources right by there, but these ones we're keeping that. My lord, that's an amazing deal. Artifacts are far more rare than everything else. Especially waste. Uh, waste is, unfortunately, quite prolific. What's the pity, really? Founder, you may be interested to learn that there are other secrets hidden inside the nearby ruins. They can contain artifacts, rare and valuable technology from before Titan's fall. When you select a ruin, you can choose to extract artifacts instead of salvaging it. But keep in mind, not all ruins contain artifacts. You must survey them first to make sure. 
Artifacts are very rare, so use them wisely. If you have many artifacts, you can always donate them to the council. It will earn you quite a bit of influence. Now, from what I've seen so far, a lot of the, the numbers are probably going to be tweaked as uh, more feedback comes back from uh, from early access. Uh, right now, uh, from what I've seen, resources are never particularly difficult to come by in any form. Uh, money, influence, it all flows fairly, fairly easily. There we go. We found something that had an artifact. And now we can go ahead and extract the ones that we found earlier. Words of the wise, though, we have got a skip button. So if uh, if we had just found that and just wanted to go ahead and extract it without having to look around for the other things, we could have just skipped. And I really love that. That is such a good quality of life enhancement in any game that has it, frankly. Uh, there, are, there are some games where you can basically soft lock yourself by skipping ahead of uh, what the tutorial expects you to do. And as someone who does that uh, compulsively, yeah, these, these skip options are always so very, very appreciated. All right, while we're waiting, I'm going to have my employees go and do more stuff. Founder? Right, right. They told me you'd be checking in soon. I'm Vern Skull, your waste management officer. I think that title is pretty reductive, but yeah, I'm the one who moves the waste around. You make the trash, I move the trash. You dump the trash, I burn the trash. It's a beautiful partnership. Wonderful. Boy, you do have a lot of trash piling up around uh, your city, don't not you? Not that much. I need no four. Yet, though. We'll handle it later. Now that's a nice building to get an artifact. The only thing that I would lose is stuff I don't want. So that's actually pretty cool. Titan founder. I am Anar Peer, your council Hello. representative. There are currently nine council members on Titan. Each of us sponsors and oversees different corporations on this moon. I am your sponsor. Your city permit and council funding are thanks to me. I hope you will return my faith with high profits. I will endeavor and to do so. Everything the council has given you can easily be taken away. You know, not so subtle threat. Notwithstanding, I'm sure we'll have a wonderful relationship. The council has granted you a headquarters facility. Enter your headquarters by selecting it in your city view. I suggest you build some devices inside of your headquarters. Every new city needs a few essential devices to operate smoothly. Now this is the part where the uh, strategic layer gets really, really fun. So let's go into the, the building itself and start uh, customizing Founder, it. Let's, we've got two floors. That one's not available right now, though. That will keep your city running. The first devices you need are storage containers to hold your minerals and isotopes. Build a storage container here in your headquarters. If you need more room, you can also build one inside a factory. Very well. Now, what you'll have seen me doing there is I've said that this particular storage container should be uh, reserved purely for isotopes from now on. Now, if you look over here at all the various uh, items, these ones aren't in uh, just yet, and conveyor belt. So we are going to have to have some sort of um, factory floor in these areas, which is going to be fantastic. But if we uh, have a look at them, some of them have like Tetris block like designs. And so there is going to be a, a, an element of, of um, efficiency inherent in just setting up these buildings to get the most out of the floor space you've got. The door to the facility is over here. That's an elevator that allows to get to other floors when they're available. And this path out here, we can't build on this blue area, but our workers and our citizens can walk along it. So there's always like a perimeter that they can walk through. But once it gets to the floor plan in here, I believe you can, though I, I haven't uh, for science it uh, yet, but I believe you could effectively build around something to the point that no one could access it and thus it would be completely wasted. But for now, all we need to do is add in a storage container. I would like a, a medium storage container. Let's go and pop that one down right there. That should do nicely. In fact, we'll uh, speed time up a little bit so we can get this one done quickly. There we go. We're pulling the minerals out of here. 
And now, bump, bump, there we go. I have now restricted what goes in here. Us a temporary solution to our waste problem. Marvelous. There's waste all over our city, but you can build a waste receptacle in your headquarters to store it. Your employees will automatically pick up the waste and place it into storage. Perfect. Now, it's not a long-term solution, but it'll have to do for now. I'll do fine for now. Besides, if the citizens can't see the waste, it might as well not be there, right? <laughs> oh dear. But you'll notice that I have isolated the various storages so that they they have a very specific purpose. Against the borders of your territory, the city must expand. Very well. You can claim any parcel of land from the council with influence. You can spend influence to acquire what any part of here. land in your city view, even if it is not connected to land you already own. Now that's a nice, carefully, a nice uh, feature. Are equally profitable. Now, if we are expanding out for ruins, we probably want to go for the higher, higher level ones. But I think the first thing we're going to do is, well, actually, what's this one like? That's got a decent amount of minerals in it. Um, I wouldn't mind getting some more minerals. So sure, we'll claim this one a little bit further out, just to illustrate that we can select them f further away. Founder, you may have noticed that there are several patches of resource-rich land near your territory. Surface level minerals and isotopes require no special equipment to harvest. This makes them the best choice for a new city. You should Marvelous. claim this land from the council as soon as possible. Very well, let's grab this one. Founder, you now own a valuable patch of resources. It is time to harvest them. Select any patch of resources you own and assign an employee to work there. Your employee will obediently collect those resources until none remain. Marvelous. I approve. There we go. Now, Hi, founder. Hmm. Thrilled to finally meet you. I'm Ayana Oak, your Hello, power Ayana. systems engineer. I'll be managing your city's power systems. I love your enthusiasm already. Energy production, energy storage, all that great stuff. It's my passion, honestly. Since I was a kid, I've wanted nothing more than to slam the contact switch on a giga battery and see the sky light up. And after years of school and grad school and VR training programs and <laughs> dropping out of VR training programs, I'm finally here. We'll do great stuff together, Founder. Trust me. My career is on the line, and you can count on me to take that seriously. This is a fairly common theme. Like, everyone is really worried about their jobs so far. With perhaps the exception of the monitor. Um, I checked inventory, and we don't have enough fuel. We need fuel to generate energy for our buildings and devices. Very well. Luckily, there's fuel all around us in the air. Titan's air is so toxic, it contains many flammable substances we can burn for energy. So, uh, build a fuel good fabrication device in your headquarters, or in a factory. These devices don't require any external energy of their own, and they operate without employees. Very convenient. Fantastic. Now, currently, fuel travels anywhere. I'm not sure if that's always going to be the case. That may just be until the logistics are implemented. Uh, we've got a choice between a modest fuel fabricator or a much more chunky fuel fabricator. I think we will go for the more chunky fuel fabricator. I mean, realistically, in terms of the space it uses up, other than the fact that it's a slightly more awkward shape to deal with, it is actually more space efficient. Um, but let's go ahead and plonk you right there. Now, I don't know if we really need people to be able to access every side to be able to draw stuff out of it. Let's hope they don't and they can just, as long as they can get next to it, they can they can grab things from it. We, I guess we'll find out as we go forward. So, for sciencing shall commence. On the road to fuel independence. Marvelous. Soon, we'll have more than we need, so we need fuel tanks. Okay. It's toxic, it's flammable. If we don't have a safe place to put excess fuel, we have to throw it out. Let's build some fuel tanks to store our excess fuel. Then we can build up a reserve. If our Sounds like a plan. If ever go offline, we can tap the reserve to power our city. 
Sounds like a good plan. In fact, uh, it doesn't seem to be any difference other than the initial outlay, but it, they seem about as efficient as each other, so we could just plonk that down right there if we want to do, or maybe uh, have it just squeeze in somewhere else, or I could just go for a, for a little one. Honestly, producing more fuel than I need is probably where we're going to be going. I'm not going to try and run uh, low on fuel, so just a, a little uh, fuel tank should be enough for now. Just a small, uh, small reserve. Okay, Founder, it's finally time to turn our fuel into energy. Fantastic. Most buildings and devices need an external source of energy in order to operate. Build an energy generator somewhere on empty floor space, in your headquarters, or in a factory. Okay. The generator will convert fuel into energy. Now, we're producing five which means that we could go with a large and a medium generator and we'd use up the entirety of the energy being produced. We'll start with the large... Oh, that actually fits in quite nicely right there. Yes, I approve. Let's get you down. Maybe, looking at this, we could later then pop that one in there, perhaps. That would actually not be bad at all. It would still leave us room to access that uh, storage there as well. Oh, I like it. I like it a lot. The juice is flowing! It's time to send that energy out to the buildings and devices that need it. Energy doesn't travel on its own. <laughs> I wish. We need relays to carry the energy. Very well. Let's build some relays now. They'll power everything the grid touches. Just make sure that all the buildings and devices that need energy are connected to the grid and that the grid has an energy source. Okay, so when it mentions uh, buildings that need energy, nothing over here that we've built so far needs any energy at all. And this would be the energy source, so we just need the green overlay to touch it. And as you can see, there's like a, a spark connecting the two. Now, when it comes to two relays, you only need the overlapping area of the two e relays to touch. You don't need this relay. In fact, let me uh, pop that down. If that's there, as long as... Uh, Initially, I thought, oh, well, I'd have to have the relays overlapping each other completely, but you don't. You just need the area of effect to touch, Energy which is actually pretty cool. Fuel. If we don't use it, it goes to waste. We need to build some battery devices to store extra energy. Very well. If our generators go offline, and I really hope that doesn't happen, then so we're switching to battery backup. Oh, and just like generators, batteries must be connected to the energy grid if you want them to work. Makes sense. Okay, we'll pop that one down there so it's connected to the grid. Now, the generator itself it isn't a grid. It's not. Even if we put the battery right next to it, it wouldn't charge. You need the energy relay to work. We should see that starting to build up a charge. Excellent. Hey there. You ever hooked up a building to an energy grid before? Can't say I have. Your generators are producing energy, but they can't get it to the grid unless you build some industrial outlets. Build an industrial outlet somewhere inside your headquarters. Then connect your generators to it with an energy relay. Once the generators are hooked up to an industrial outlet, the grid outside can access the building's energy. Marvelous. You can also I approve. Use industrial outlets to pass energy between different floors of the building. Once it's on the grid, this building can act as an energy source for other buildings in your city. And if you need energy to flow from the city to inside your buildings, it works the same way too. Oh dear. Build an industrial outlet inside your headquarters and it can be connected to the city energy grid. Done and done. Also, my workers appear to have phased with my energy generators. Uh, I wasn't I wasn't prepared for this. I do apologize. That you are running out of free space for devices. We are, yes. As your city grows, you will always need more floor space. It's always if the way, really. Has no more room, you can always build additional factories and install the devices there. If you are to power your factory with energy generated inside another building, you will want to build this new factory close by. I'm sure your power engineer will explain how to do this later. That is her department, after all. When construction is complete, you can enter the factory interior and customize it, just like your headquarters. Perhaps. Right. We'll pop down another one just to give us a bit more uh, more uh, room for waste. In fact, we'll pop down a third, and that way we've used everything. I don't fancy that we really need much more going on in here. 
we could probably get away with a, another fuel um, set up there and then another generator if we really wanted to or just fill this space up with batteries and as long as our workers can move around the perimeter it looks like we've uh, got everything we need out of this which i'm actually really really happy with right let's head on back out though we've got to build a factory at long last uh, so let's go ahead and do that then let's uh, place a factory all the way over here so a factory down here provides floor space to build additional devices does not require energy marvelous let's go ahead and uh, pop it there we'll turn the door the little uh, arrow there pointing towards our, our headquarters not that it really will make much difference i don't think but uh, may as well for the sake of it and while all that's going on we're still gathering more minerals which is very good now isotopes as far as I can see, isotopes are really only used in building construction. I've not noticed that they get used for any kind of device um, construction. So, you know, we might not need to worry too much about those ones. Uh, do I want this? Hmm. Is there anything? Well, actually, those minerals, yes, I do. Uh, those ones, not so much, though. That being said, may as well claim it all. And then uh, we can get rid of all of these spaces. Uh, I will take the artifact over the... The paltry amount of minerals that was in that one, though. There we go. And factory complete. Founder, our city is bursting at the seams. We need to grow. But if we want to grow our corporation, we'll need a real energy grid in this city. Okay. Energy works on a citywide grid, just like it works in our headquarters and factories. To get our city's energy grid online, build an energy pylon that connects your headquarters and factory. Make sure Very that well. your factory has an industrial outlet too, or else it can't receive power from the outside. Okay, so the energy pylon here, uh, we can place around and it works exactly the same as the energy relays do internally, but this one works between buildings. So I want to make sure that both of these buildings are overlapping. I could just build it right next to my... Um, to my uh, headquarters and it should hook up nicely there so let's go ahead and plonk that one down but we are also going to need an industrial outlet in the factory so let's go ahead inside and take care of that uh, now then we're going to want an energy relay as well to actually get the energy from whatever we put in here to whatever else uh, we could perhaps have something like that you know what that yeah, that's a reasonable amount of space. Honestly, we could just go ahead. Uh, since there are so many of them, we could just pop these all over the place. So, uh, sure, we'll pop that one there. And then we can pop down an industrial outlet. We can have it just over by the wall. Or we could have it just uh, uh, nestled in there. And I think uh, nestling it should be fine sure let's pop that one down we can actually see what it looks like when there is no power coming in from outside as well that's actually pretty cool again i really like the way that this looks getting a very uh, tiberium feel from all of these uh these things especially the isotopes okay overlap your factory with the energy pylon well i mean it is so I guess we're gonna gonna get to use the skip function here. <laughs> that is definitely overlapping. Let's have a look inside though and just make sure that that is actually powered. Yep, that's part of the main grid, so I can go ahead and skip that step. Again, this is early access, so there are gonna be a few bugs and that's to be expected here and there. Hopefully Founder, they get resolved quickly. That you've successfully constructed an energy system to serve your city. Great. As well as fuel and energy storage in case of disaster. Bravo. However, your future population also needs to be stored adequately. <laughs> I suggest you construct so sinister. pods inside your headquarters. So you sinister. Set these pods up next to your factory equipment. Don't worry, your citizens won't mind. Are you, mm, I'm not entirely sure that you are the best... Uh, best authority on that but sure okay so habitation pods or habitat pods we want to place these down now they have access points these have to be available i can't have them blocked in any way and both of them have to be available but again they can walk around the perimeter so i can just go ahead and pop them out there in fact uh you know what sure we're going to place down two like this then 
adhering to the laws of symmetry, we're going to place that one over there. There we go. That'll actually look really good. And in fact, we've got some space in here that I could use, for example, batteries or, or waste receptacles. And indeed, we are actually going to place down waste receptacles in here. I'm just going to preempt a problem before it becomes one and place these there and there. Plenty of places for my employees to be able to store this waste because we're about to house some humans and uh, humans. A wasteful by nature, really. It's it's not our fault. It's just it's just a thing we do. There we go. Space station operations. Hello. A replacement. I am not. Uh, never mind. You're the new founder, right? I'm Erlan Fletch, your local spaceport operator. What Hello, Erlan. Fletch. Fletch. Up here? No. The space station is well. It's right above you. Council operation, low-level orbit. Every few cycles, the council arranges for a new set of trade ships to dock up here. They're carrying cargo and migrants, ready to head down to spaceports all over Titan's surface. You can find the spaceport in your city view. Mm -hmm. If you last longer than the last founder the council sponsored, <laughs> seriously, it's rough out here. Did you have anything more to say, Yolan? Founder. You did. So you oh, thank goodness. The spaceport is locked up. See, the council doesn't do things for free. You gotta pay to play around here. If you want access to those ships in the spaceport, first, you gotta trade a few artifacts. Yeah, I think it's ridiculous too. But don't tell anyone I said that. I, uh, need this job pretty bad. Fleeters, like me, can only work in zero G. Again, with the, this kind of like, you know, everyone is, is uh, really just like, clinging to their jobs as best they can. Uh, this is why we wanted to keep hold of those artifacts. We can just use two straight away to unlock this. There we go. Welcome to the spaceport, Founder. Here's where all the Thank big you. moves happen on Titan. Now that you have access to the spaceport, you can see the ships headed toward Titan, full of cargo and migrants. You can buy what they're carrying with influence. This is your primary way of increasing your city's population. Okay. Primary, hungry, not only. Sure Interesting. To house them. Otherwise, I can't send them down. Rules are rules. Fair enough. And uh, don't be surprised if they bring a lot of waste with them, too. You'll just have to deal with it. Hashtag. Very well. Uh, we've got a couple of options here. They all have three waste. They have no waste. It costs me the same, but I'll get an extra person. So, yes, please. Let's go for them. There we go. They were sold to me. How marvelous. Uh, marvelously sinister, that is. Uh, my lord. Greetings, uh, There we go. Oh, no. So glad to finally meet you. I'm Lyle Visk, your head of human assets. Everyone hmm. here in the human assets office has just been aching to get on a conference call with you. Our philosophy? Eliminate cost centers and build human efficiency. Oh dear. We transform people from a human resource into a monetary resource. I don't think we're going to get on. I'll try, but I, I just feel that our, our ethics ah, are yes, diametrically so opposed. you decided to monetize your citizens. Excellent. I, I made no there such decision. Jobs. Lots of jobs. When citizens work, they earn credits. We harvest Ooh. those credits by exposing them to high click-through video advertisements. Oh, no. To begin, construct monetization stations inside your headquarters or factories. Once those devices are built, our citizens can start enjoying some fresh, exciting adverts. <sighs> This is this is where it ends, and I realize I realize the irony. Uh, a, a YouTube content creator going, ah, no ads. Look, it's it's a necessary evil. Doesn't mean I need to be happy about it. Uh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, my my citizens. I just want to give you a good life, but it seems that that, uh, that desire is going to be denied me. Uh, okay, so we need some monetization stations. <laughs> Uh, where you can watch a fresh, exciting advert. Oh my god. Right, okay, let's uh, let's go ahead and pop some of these down then. Um, let's see, where could I pop you? Um, hmm, actually, that's not a bad little, little spot there. I mean, I'm not going to be able to do it on that side, but still. Maybe, in fact, I could put that one over there. Ooh. I sense the opportunity for 
greater efficient. Oh no. Oh no, it's begun. Oh, I must resist. This is not turning into a Dark Avak playthrough. Though, honestly, I'm starting to get the impression that this is perfect for a Dark Avak playthrough, actually. I'd be on the council in no time. Mostly because the rest of the councillors wouldn't be. They'd be on my dinner. No, no. Not enough coffee today to invoke Dark Avak. No, I refuse. Ah. There we go. Oh, my lord. It's just ads. This is the terrible future that we have ah, waiting for founder, us, everyone. I've been meaning to talk to you about conversion capsules. It's where Titan's industries transform obedient citizens into even more obedient employees. Uh... We market the procedure as training, but the process is really more technical, and the effects are permanent. Uh... Once they've gone through conversion, your employees will be able to work basically forever without breaks or sleep. Now, there may be some long-term consequences. I have questions. That science isn't currently aware of, but it is a voluntary process, so your conscience is clear. That is absolutely 100% not how conscience uh, conscious uh, conscience works. No, but. It's not clear just because they they said okay to it. Especially not if I made saying okay to it easy. You scallywag. But nevertheless, we need to build one so that we can progress. Uh, okay, so I'm fairly certain we're training Cybermen. Um, I'm pretty certain that, that that is effectively what's going on here. We're making Cybermen. Uh, I don't know if that is necessarily the best thing to be doing with my time. Uh, in fact, I'm fairly certain it isn't. But uh, nevertheless, here we are. Uh, right, I do want to make sure there's plenty of room for them to move around these buildings, because I am going to need them to, to have access. Uh, I could shunt that one just down a little bit. That might give us a bit of a better spot. In fact, that middle spot will be free. Could I get down a small energy relay? Um, you know what? Sure. And for symmetry, sure. Let's do that. Let's get all of these connected. And then we can get a conversion capsule right there. Then that gives us a little bit of space just at the end there that we can use for other things if we want to. So I could have one there, for example, and then one over here as well. Okay, I, I think this uh, I think this works out for us. Uh, eventually, we're not going to build toward that just yet. I'm, I'm trying so hard to resist the urge to just drive forward and do what I want to do rather than what the tutorial is telling me. And even though that skip button there is going to give me a get-out-of-jail-free card, I am... I'm trying to be a good Avac. Ah, there we go. I say as I build a Cyberman manufactorum. Capsule, you're ready to convert citizens into employees. Start by selecting one of your conversion capsules. This is where you'll pay for new employees. Give it a try now. Your citizens are very eager to sign up for conversion. I believe that. Less than than I believe that this is good for their their brains. Just watching ads, they're not exciting ads even. They're probably just the same thing that they'll never buy over and over and over again. They're only watching it because they're desperate for money. You scoundrels! This is the dystopian that we've always been warned against, and nevertheless, we're just marching headlong toward it. But okay, let's go ahead and convert someone. Calling a conversion and calling them employees doesn't make it sound any less like slavery. Though I suppose, uh, are Cybermen slaves? Really, though? They're probably not slaves. But certainly still ethically very dubious. By the way, Founder, there's a limit to the number of employees you can have at any given time. But don't worry, we can increase that number if you start to find it limiting. Hmm. Each conversion capsule allows for even more employee brains. This sounds even worse when you talk if about you employee brains. Your maximum controllable number of employees simply build more conversion capsules. Hmm. This is so dubious, my lord. Uh, but yeah, it looks like each one can only handle two, and, and, uh, from the look of it. What? People into em uh, what? I. Hmm. I fear that there may be a oh a wee bug, 
a wee bug that just happened there, and I've got to clean up some waste material. But unfortunately, looking at the time, we're all out of time for this episode. So we're going to be wrapping things up there. So uh, honestly, that, that little bug couldn't have, have had better timing, really, and I should be thankful. Thank you, bug, for holding out for so long. But that is all we have time for this episode. If you are interested in seeing a little bit more of Industries of Titan, then do let me know down in the comments or with a like on the video, and perhaps we'll jump back in for another episode, maybe finish off the tutorial and see a little bit of the combat as well. But that's it for now. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed, and I hope to see you in the next First Taste, whatever that may be. But until then, and as always, do take care, everyone. And don't volunteer for conversion. It's just a fancy way of saying they're going to dig out your guts and replace your brain with robot bits. Unless you're into that, in which case, by all means.